so if you guys will go back to another one here in the channel i am will pounding out your new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the new 2024 hyundai palisade courtesy of jack dion balvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because you get a heck of a lot of value for all of the features that they put in this thing so that is one thing. You also get America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance, which is also the very best out there right now. This is a very good looking SUV in my personal opinion. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 palisade first one being the se starting at thirty six thousand four hundred dollars sel for thirty nine one fifty xrt for forty one five fifty limited for forty seven thousand seven hundred lastly the calligraphy being the one we are in today starting at fifty thousand one hundred dollars and so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive setup if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add two thousand dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power Power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3.8 liter direct injected V6, putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5,200 RPM. That power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know as always, we will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 19 in the city, 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 24 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive but taking regular unleaded fuel save a little bit of money there gotta love it but anyways before we do any kind of paddle shifter or acceleration test i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a circular dial located just below the climate control settings and that will give you comfort eco sport smart and snow adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response steering sensitivity all-wheel drive system engagement and it's going to tighten up the side bolsters as well at least if you go with the calligraphy trim level in the sport driving mode kind of like a g-wagon would so that is absolutely insane but anyways now i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test i want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react also want to see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right got it in sport driving mode let's see if it holds manual shift mode here go Oh, delay. Big delay. All right, it's quick. It's relatively quick, so no issues emerging onto the highway, but dang, is there a delay to those paddle shifters, unfortunately. Not that I expected anything less, because typically in SUVs, you don't have the quickest reacting paddle shifters, so I don't know. It, it's a delay but the one good thing about having paddle shifters in an suv is when it does snow out rather than hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road you can of course simply just do a little bit of downshifting using the paddle shifters so that lets the engine do a little bit of the braking so you're less likely to then slide off the road so that is there for you if you want it but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.4 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes that comes in at 126 feet as far as that braking feel goes it kind of feels like that so definitely on the softer side soft braking feel not a firm braking feel but typically i don't know you don't really want a firm braking feel in an suv quite honestly but Having said that, a little bit firmer on this one, I would not have minded because, I mean, if you look at Volvo, the safest cars in the world, their 60 to zeros typically come in at right around 114, 115 feet. So a little bit on the higher end of things, but not as bad as a lot of other SUVs. I've seen as high as 139. So it'll get the job done. I'll put it that way. But anyways, the touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, that has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today as I go over a speed bump. So I've had no issues whatsoever when it comes to ride quality. As far as steering feel goes, it is weighted on the heavier side of things right now because I have it in that sport driving mode. Like I said, that steering feel will adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So if I put it back in comfort driving mode, it is going to instantly loosen up, giving them much more of an SUV-like steering feel. So did want to mention that. So a little something for everyone. I'll put it that way. As far as cabin noise goes, as I'm blasting the air right now because it's like 90 degrees out, it's honestly great. 
like cabinoise is one of the better parts of the palisade for sure because all trim levels get an acoustic laminated front windshield if you were to go with the sel and up you will get acoustic laminated front door glass and then with the limited and calligraphy you're going to find acoustic laminated rear door glass as well a lot of times even on luxury vehicles you won't find the acoustic laminated rear door glass you always get the front but you very rarely ever get the rear so that is why it is such a serene cabin in the palisade there's so much luxury in this thing for not really a luxury price point so 53,000 that is amazing considering you don't get acoustic laminated rear door glass even in mercedes which go for like 90,000. what i'm getting at is quite honestly that is an incredible value i'm just gonna put it that way but then take a look at rear visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back i will say i don't have the third row up right now maybe those third row headrests are large and in charge i really don't know yet because i haven't checked them out but Right now, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Rain sensing windshield wipers are gonna come standard on the limited and calligraphy. So that means whenever it starts raining out, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there and that's gonna assist with forward visibility. And right now I am looking at a head up display, which again, come standard on the limited and calligraphy that is projecting my speed speed limited safety features up onto my windshield. I will say it's kind of hard to see with sunglasses on, but if I were to take them off, that is super bright display, but with sunglasses on, you can't really see it. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of her brand new 2024 Hyundai Palisade. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Hyundai Palisade finished in Sierra Burgundy. This is a new color. I haven't reviewed on this one yet. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, but there is a new calligraphy night edition for 2024. I wanted to mention that since we have the calligraphy, we don't have the night edition, however, but I did want to mention it, it is available if you wanted to go that route. Also wanted to mention up front, since we're up here is the XRT trim level is going to give you slightly more ground clearance compared to all the other trim levels available for the Palisade. So if you want to do a little bit of light overlanding, that may be the trim level that you want to go with, but let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K indicating Korea being this one is built and assembled in South Korea so gotta love it but let's go ahead and start up front LED headlights do come standard on all trim levels across the board get the automatic feature with that of course meaning when it starts to get dark on at night the headlights will turn on automatically for you there but also automatic high beams coming standard on every trim level across the board so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams so very convenient feature there led daytime running lights of course as well that looks good led accent lighting you get front skid plates for all trim levels across the board as well front air curtains to the sides there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination you do have that adaptive cruise control sensor found on the very bottom portion of that front bumper i'm gonna show that to you guys real quick and i like the aluminum trim accent found on the very bottom as well that definitely looks good but overall definitely a very very good looking front end it looks like nothing else on the road so definitely hyundai gave it a very unique look so i'm a fan but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right and so but now since we are around to the side of the palisade roof rails do come standard on the sel trim level and up if you wanted those black crossbars coming on the xrt the xrt of course being the off-road trim level i guess you could say rear privacy glass coming standard across the board satin chrome window surrounds coming standard across the board as well you you will get some matte black side skirts for the SE and SEL trims. However, body colored side skirts if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated. They will be auto dimming as well that's a rare one especially in this particular class so huge fan of that and led integrated turret signals coming with that as well then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys for the se and sel trims 20 inch alloys for the xrt the limited and the calligraphy so and they're all going to kind of get a unique look to them so like these calligraphy wheels you're not going to find them on any of the other trims they are unique to this specific trim level so i do want to emphasize that but i do like the satin chrome door handles i like the chrome accenting found at the bottom portion of the doors as well very good looking but anyways let's not go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back all the way to the top you do have a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper you do have some lettering found on the back of this one it does say please like the video right now it does help me out substantially so didn't want to emphasize that also got the h-track badging back there because every single manufacturer names their all-wheel drive systems and hyundai has chosen to name it h-track so got that halogen taillights do come on the se trim level but 
all other trims are going to give you LED taillights, so a little added illumination there. I do like the aluminum trim yet again on the bottom portion of that rear bumper to tie in together with the front bumper, of course. You will find a single exhaust outlet with dual satin chrome tips coming standard on this one, so absolutely love that. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Palisade, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a hands-free power tailgate for the limited and calligraphy trim level. So if you have your hands full, you just need to kick your foot underneath, it's gonna automatically open up for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18 cubic feet even behind that third row. Of course, if that is not enough space, the third row does fold down. There are some buttons back there in the cargo area to fold it down, so it was extremely easy as well. Bumping that up to 45.8 cubic feet, and then with all rows folded, 86.4 cubic feet, so ton of space there. For comparison's sake, Pilot comes in at 87 cubic feet, so identical to that basically. Highlander comes in at 84.3 cubic feet. Telluride is, I think, at 87 or 88 cubic feet, so they're all about the same, more or less, but there is a 60-40 split then for that uh, second row. But grocery bag hooks can be found back there. There is LED cargo lighting, love that. 12-volt power outlet as well. Tie-down anchors, there's some seat belt hooks, always like seeing those, and there is some floor storage and quite a bit of it too much more in floor storage than i'm typically used to seeing so definitely a big fan of that you can put tire inflator kits back there or ice scrapers whatever you need but then make your way up to the third row legroom that's going to come in at 31.4 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in that third row there are some rear cup holders back there and if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy you will also find usb charging port so if you got kids that are obsessed with tablets those two trims might be the ones for you but anyways, then making our way up to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 42.4 inches. Again, for reference, I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. If you want to cap this chair, let's go with the SEL trim level and up. If you wanted the bench seating being for three people in the middle, go with the SE. It's going to be optional on the SEL. So I did want to emphasize that. Automatic climate control does come standard for all trim levels across the board. That is new for 2024, by the way, so that is pretty cool. Dual rear USB charging ports coming standard. Heated rear seats with the limited and calligraphy trim levels. That is pretty darn cool. Ventilated rear seats as well for that limited and calligraphy. 115 volt power outlet, limited and calligraphy. There is a 12 volt power outlet as well. And here's another thing that's new for 2024. Rear window sunshades come on the XRT trim level and up. The XRT didn't used to get those rear window sunshades, but it does now for 2024. So that's pretty cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating for the SE. High tech trim seats uh, being leatherette really for the SEL and XRT trim levels. And they will be heated and power adjustable with power lumbar for those two trims as well. Then the limited trim level is going to add to that leather seating, four-way power lumbar, thigh cushion extension, ventilated front seats and memory settings. And lastly, the calligraphy is going to give you that premium Napa leather and an ergo motion driver seat. Like I was saying with the sport driving mode, it uh, tightens up the side bolsters, which again is something that I first saw in a G-Wagon, a $200,000 SUV, but now you got in the Palisade, so that's wonderful. But overall seating was incredible, incredibly comfortable. So definitely not gonna have any issues with taking this thing on a long road trip. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel because it's still dang good for our calligraphy trim level. So tilt and telescoping, leather wrapped for the SEL trim level and up, two-tone leather wrapped for the calligraphy. That is something straight off of Volvo right there. They always do that. And then heated for the limited and calligraphy trim levels as well. Then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Hyundai logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that hold button, that's gonna be a remote start. But my favorite part is smart pack. So if you got kids and somebody pulls too close to you on either side and your kids can't get in without absolutely smashing their door next to them, Smart Park is going to help you out because you simply just lock the vehicle, do the remote start, and then you can pull it in or back it out to the point where they can actually get in a heck of a lot easier, swing their door wide open without completely wrecking the person next to you. So that is definitely a feature that if you have kids, you're going to understand it. But keyless entry with the push button start does come standard on all trim levels across the board. And the SEL trim level and up is also going to give you a digital key. So you don't even need the keys if you didn't want them. But anyways, I'm just going to put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of that air vent. So 
Once started up, analog gauges coming with the SE, SEL, and XRT trims. However, limited in calligraphy are going to give you a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Speedometer on the left, tachometer is on your right. And again, they do adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So if I put it in the sport driving mode, it tightened up the side bolsters again, but it's also going to completely change the look of the gauges. And I think Oh, eco drive mode is going to look a lot cooler as well. I didn't know there was this many options. So eco is one of my favorite looks for the drive modes. I got to say comfort is all right. Sport is pretty cool, but I think the eco colors is my favorite look overall, quite honestly. But anyways, it gives you your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. And of course, if you put the turn signals on, it's going to give you that blind spot view monitor so you can see what is in your blind spot on the gauges themselves, which is also pretty darn crazy but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power sunroof coming on the xrt trim level dual panel sunroof for the limited and calligraphy so rear passengers also have a view of the sky and i mean like second and third row so definitely goes back pretty far led interior lighting for the sel trim level and up you got a school bus style mirror that does come standard that's pretty cool microfiber headliner with the calligraphy i have to mention that the headliners do differ dependent upon the trim but microfiber it's like a nice suede feel to it so i love that 64 colors of ambient lighting for the calligraphy and the limited so that is new for the limited for 2024 by the way lots of changes for the trim levels but auto dimming rear view mirror with homely controls for the sel trim level and up tri-zone climbing control for all trim levels wireless phone charger for the sel trim level and up quilted leather door panels for the calligraphy trim level gotta love that i see that that definitely looks pretty darn good and i like this black and white kind of texturized look that's found on the doors it continues on just above the passenger side glove box also a very nice look to it just surrounding all the shift buttons is this nice texturized silver finish and it is texturized so i like that as well a lot of manufacturers especially in its class will leave that in matte black or a matte gray but hyundai always chooses to do a nice finish to it although it's still plastic it looks a heck of a lot better than usually the competition end up doing so just behind that you got a couple cup holders there's a wireless phone charger beside the cup holders of course and in the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage in there for sure got a 12 volt power outlet and a usb charging port as well so that is pretty darn cool and look at the speaker covers that's a pretty nice finish as well we'll get into the sound system we'll test that out in a second and forgot to mention home light controls with a frameless rear view mirror so that's for up to three different garage doors like that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen so every single trim level is going to give you a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display Love that. Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Get this, factory navigation system for every single trim level across the board. So if you're like me and you periodically drive through the Appalachian Mountains where there is no service whatsoever, that's when the factory navigation system comes handy. But anyways, climate control settings you can access up there. There's a voice memo system where you can record your voice and play it back at a later date. There's also quiet mode where it eliminates the rear speakers and then limits the speaker volume up front. So if you got your kids sleeping in the back, it doesn't wake them up. That's pretty cool. You can check out your ambient lighting settings up there, of course, as well, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's a couple of them. You got six speakers for the SE, SEL, and XRT trims. And then a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system for the limited and calligraphy trim. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. I run with kidnapping. I'm talking about kidnapping. I'm talking about murdering. All right. Yeah, there was a ton of bass in that song and you can feel that bass because there's a ton of bass in this sound system. I will say that. So clarity was fine. Bass was ridiculous, possibly because of the song. I don't know, but that is a pretty darn good sound system for sure. And like I said, the speaker covers look dang good as well. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Palisade in reverse, there is a pretty darn high definition rear view camera that does come standard, but you also get a 360 degree monitor for the limited and calligraphy that's gonna be that bird's eye view on the right, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so let me start by saying, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, meaning 
doesn't get any safer than this. You gotta love that. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You got a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Yes, every trim level gets that, love that. Forward collision avoidance assist, lane following assist, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system, safe exit assist, rear parking sensors, an adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which I always say Hyundai does better than any other brand out there. It is an amazing system for this thing. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Palisade, excellent safety. You can't beat an IIHS top safety pick plus. Digital gauges are wonderful as well. I love the colors in the eco driving mode, but if you don't, you like the carbon fiber background, put it in sport, or you could do your traditional setup in the comfort mode. So they're completely customizable. I love that. Ambient lighting is great as well. Not quite as good as BMW or Mercedes, but it's still dang good. And it's insane to think that you can get this vehicle for under $40,000. So you got to admit, this is an incredible value when you consider what you get with the 12.3 inch screen with the three years of 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance, America's best warranty, safest vehicle possible. This is a very good family hauler without a doubt. I really can't think of anything that could possibly make this vehicle any better. But anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stick out.